Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all of the usual suspects, Sands, the Nightcap guys. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. And from Franklin, Tennessee, and no, no rib in his mouth, in not case today. you guys are listening to this and not watching the video. We've got Taria putting in the, the reps, Harris. Taria, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good to see you from Atlanta. And then from Sin City, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, are you a gambling man? Uh, I feel like there's a setup here on this line. The, the setup is every time I eat out. Yes, yes, there is. I forgot. That's one of your go-tos. There it is. Good to see you. Oh, good, man. Thanks. Last but not least, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? And how is that Traeger treating you? Mark, I'm, I'm good, but I haven't forgotten what you said to me the other day. So uh, it's been, it's what you said to me has been stewing a lot like, you know, the like smoking inside of me, like the, the meat smokes on the Traeger. Like, a, like an Eric Peterson chili. Like an Eric Peterson chili or turkey or whatever. I got you. I got you. But yeah, I can't believe you, uh, you dogged me like that the other day. Okay. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more? All right. So, you know, on Sunday, I, I take the Traeger and, you know, I, I go all in first time going all in on it. And I decide I'm going to, I'm going to make some pulled pork. So I follow the recipe and, you know, I follow the recipe, which is just like we teach in flight school, how to follow a recipe of, of success. I follow the recipe and uh, as I pull it out and, you know, it looks incredible. I share the picture with you and Eric and Tate and everybody's like ooing and eyeing over it. And then you come along and says, wait a minute, I got to get me one of these things. Cause if Scott Todd can do that, man. And I'm like, what kind of swipe is that? Come on, man. It's one thing to attack a man, but to attack his barbecue, that takes it to a whole skills, new level of love. <laughs> right. I mean, even I saw it and I was like, ooh, shots fired. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. It really wasn't a shot fired. I, I'll tell you what my, my thinking was. Here's someone for years and years would eat Panera bread daily for lunch. Okay, and I thought, on, well, on, Scott on. can definitely take bread and a few deli meats and, and, and arrange those. He knows how to do that. No problem, okay? But anything beyond the sandwich, I just don't see it. So I thought, well, it couldn't be that difficult then. So Eric, am I wrong, Taria? It, it it's not a difficult level for of me. Skill. Uh, Landon does it, so it's not difficult for me at all. I, I don't really use it. I just enjoy. It also takes a level of patience. Yes, because deep down inside, you want to take that temperature and like crank it up to 500 and let's get this thing on the road, man. But you know what? What it took, Mark? I woke up at 630 in the morning. OK, set the alarm, woke up early. You know, I spent time preparing the meat, rubbing it, getting it nice and, you know, seasoned up and everything, getting the grill to the exact right temperature, making sure that the probes went in properly. So I knew what the internal temperature was, you know, patiently waiting for the, the result to come out, putting it on the grill and, and not opening it despite, you know, wanting to look at it all the time going, is it still there kind of a deal. And then, you know, as the internal temperature rose, taking it off the grill to to go and to prep it for the second step or the next step on its journey. And then, you know, waiting again and, and being very, very meticulous to make sure that it wasn't, you know, getting too hot too fast. I wanted it to like smoke, uh, you know, slow and, and long, you know, and so that the rib would fall off and then I could just put that rib in my mouth and walk around and say, this is how they do it in Nashville. I'll, I'll tell you. All right. I'll just be honest. It's not Panera. Okay. I was, I was just being passive aggressive. All of you guys have the Traeger. I don't have it. It's emasculating to see these pictures of manly meats. And I'm making 
you know. You had a good salad. Making a nice salad or a smoothie. It's emasculating. All right. Let's talk about our our roundtable topic, because I think it's actually a really a timely one. What to expect as far as your sales over the holidays? And Tria put in the reps, Harris, ladies first for the first time in roundtable history. First time. I'm honored. Um, so for us, I think the first year we started, it was a little daunting for us because we didn't get the same kind of responses that we normally would get over the holidays or, or that we thought we would get um, over the holidays. And so after about year two, we kind of started doing a little more full court pressing. So instead of being passive about our marketing, like sending out, you know, maybe our deal of the week once, like we just got more aggressive. We got more into the marketing instead of, you know, just saying, oh, this is a great property. We do like the build up. Oh my gosh, we're going to put some things on sale this Friday. Look forward to it. You know, it's coming, it's coming. So we got a little more creative to try and get people to engage um, we did find that we we got a decent amount of leads over the holidays because more people seem to be on their computers and looking for things. But in terms of getting them to pull the trigger, they were wanting to spend their money on other things. So we had to be a little more creative, put things on sale, you know, extend out the payment terms. And so that's how we kind of handle the holiday season. Yeah, but would you say historically, though, it doesn't slow or it does slow for you? Would you take the last two weeks of the year off? No, no, I wouldn't. Okay. No. We still make sales, just not as much as we do not over the holiday period. Okay. Well, well fantastic. Let's go to the, the, the person that I've never seen put anything on sale. No, also, wouldn't ever buy anything on sale. The technician, Eric Peterson. <laughs> so, you know, I think that... I guess I look at it um, from the buyer's perspective. It during certain times of year, there's a lot of other noise in the world, in lives, etc. So you think about the holiday season. You know, people are making plans to get together with family. They're traveling. They're, you know, buying gifts. They're doing all these other things. So, in order for us to be heard as land sellers. We need to make an extra effort to, to stand out from the noise. Um, and that can come through through many things. It can come through, you know, what Taria was talking about, you know, announcing certain sales and doing certain types of promotions. It can also come from us being more proactive in how we work with our existing buyers list. Um, in other words, you know, maybe there's certain people we're calling at this time of year to say, Hey, you know, have you thought about a piece of land for your grandson or your son or daughter or whomever in your life? You know, we can make this very affordable and actually, you know, helping people get ideas of, of how they can, you know, maybe give a different type of holiday gift this year instead of, you know, the new PlayStation or whatever it might be. Um, so I think overall, yeah, you know, I I would say sales do slow, but that doesn't mean that, that you're not going to have any, um, and certainly if you want to make more effort and kind of work your buyer's list in a different way than you normally would, um, you know, you can, you can reap the rewards, I would say. I, I love that. I love that. Um, I love it when you call me big papa, Tate Litchfield. How do you feel about promoting during the holidays? And well, you know, before we get to you, Tate, I just want to ask Eric one follow-up question. How do you feel about the last two weeks of the year, Eric? Um, I mean, I could take it off, but not my team. I mean, the business is still going to run. Um, I don't think that, uh, they, there's no chance of making sales during that time. So I want people working the business still. I want ads going out. I want, you know, emails going out, phone calls being made, all of those things. But in terms of my attention, I could probably take the last two weeks off. Yes. 
Okay. Okay. Tate Litchfield. Yeah. I mean, end of the year is an interesting time. I think that if we do see a slowdown, it's a self-inflicted slowdown, if that makes sense. Uh, often we're taking a little bit of time to catch our breath and refocus and re uh, re-energize ourselves be- before starting like 2022. We've got big goals and big things happening. And sometimes it's helpful to clear your mind for three or four days. And like Eric said, if I do that, I don't necessarily give a pass to the team to do that. But, um, you know, we'll still, we'll sell property in December. We'll sell a lot of property in December. We've still got goals and I expect us to hit those goals. I don't really see why we wouldn't. Um, we might have to get a little creative. I do know that we'll probably have to do a little bit more marketing, a little bit more follow-up and be a little bit more proactive and hungry as opposed to other months. But the same could be said about, you know, the dead of summer, right? We often have this joke about the dog days of summer and during the dog days of summer, when it's so hot here in in Nevada, that all you want to do is sit in your, you know, boiling pool is, you know, relax, but you still have to get up and you still got to work and you still got to focus. And so end of the year, summer, Thanksgiving, birthdays, like you can sell land year round. It's all up to you. It's all up to your dedication to your craft and uh, really just being focused. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree um, with, with everything you said, but you know who might completely disagree with you because he's kind of been irascible lately? Scott Todd. Scott, do you want to be contrarian on this? Um, you know, I think it's uh, interesting that Tate's like, I'm going to take off to think, but my team, they need to keep working, working, working. But I think that the thing is, is like he's hitting on something, which is sometimes it's not necessarily about sitting there working that you actually do things. I think you do more sometimes by thinking and getting away from the office and, right. you know, going out and riding your bike and going out and, uh, you know, sitting by the, the trigger grill, Mark, you know, like, and smoking the meat all day long, essentially you, you come back renewed with a lot of energy and uh, new ideas. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Well, I'm going to definitely be testing my testosterone levels after this podcast um, because I think they're low, not having the trigger. You can solve that. It's a quick bu- click of a it's button, a swipe of a fix. card. I already have two, I already have two grills, though. So what do you it. have? I've got a, a Weber and I have a built-in. We can just get rid of those and then you'll be fine. You won't just, even miss them. Just, just the one? Just the trigger? Just the smoker? You, you won't miss the other one. All right. Well, Scott, so as far as the last two weeks of the year, do you take off uh, and then, or do you see sales slow? Um, sales, they don't, I mean, they might slow Christmas week, but then, you know, right before the end of the year, man, people have plans. They're going to buy that land they've always dreamed about, or maybe they told themselves they'd buy it this year. And so then they go out and do it. So I always see like a little sp- like after Christmas, right before Christmas, it stops. It's almost like people, you know, they're not going to spend their dollars. Then after Christmas, they're flush with cash and they're heading out. See what they can find. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, I've been doing this for so long now, 20 plus years. It doesn't slow to, to, to Tate's point. August is a little slower, but there's always sales done every single month. And as long as you have your systems and processes in place, the machine continues to run and you never, ever stop deal flow. You never stop mailing any time of the year, ever. The, the other point is, um, I thought what Scott said is, is really important. It's, it's taking that time to think and, and really being mindful about your resting as well so that you can excite the team for that next year and motivate them. And I think, um, you know, Tate brought up a really good point, which would be for our next round table podcast would be, you know, goal setting and communicating those goals and how we do that with our team. So, um, and that's not to say that Eric and Tria didn't have really good comments. It's just that 
and you get to be my age, you can't think that far back into the podcast comments. I just don't have it anymore. I've got to get some supplements, some ginkgo biloba. It's going to help me, I think. So I thought this was a really great topic, but we are now at that point of the podcast where we're going to ask for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passing in listeners to go improve their business and improve their lives. Taria, put in the reps here. <laughs> what have you got? Okay. So this really is my husband's tip because he sent it to me. So he started reading this book called um, The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel and sent it to me and I've started reading it. Um, it's actually a really good book. It kind of talks to you about how people think about money, how certain people think about money and, and you see it reflecting in you know their level of success and how others think about money. But he shares about 20 different stories in this book. It's actually a really good, easy read um, or easy listen if you're on Audible. But it helps you just think about how you view money and in turn helps you be better if you want to. Scott, are you throwing up dollars? <laughs> I'm throwing a flag on the play, but you keep going. You keep going. The flag has been thrown. <laughs> so it, it's been it's been good for me. I'm only in chapter two, um, but it it's been good. Let's go to the officials. Yeah, let's oh, go to the official. Mark, did you throw a flag? I, I wanted to throw throw a flag, but I I, I will say that Tree, the only reason Scott and I are throwing a flag is that we've been talking about this book for like a year now. <laughs> I just heard about it. <laughs> but it's it's great. And, and one of the big takeaways for me is no one's crazy about money. Right. And um, Mark, I hear a lot of what you say. I hear, I've heard him say in this book. So it's kind of like a, a thread. I'm like, yeah, Mark says that. So it's been good. Yeah. Um, Scott, you want to throw more? Fuel on the fire. I would just say that this is like one of those circular references. I believe that this is one of those circular references that errors that you get in Excel because Landon probably heard about it on this podcast. And then as a result, <laughs> it, it's he said he did not circle. <laughs> you know, maybe he did, maybe he did. And I don't know. I'm going to let Taria roll with it, but there is a flag on the play. So, you know. I don't I'll know. Accept more. The flag. I'll, I'll accept the flag. I'll accept the flag. I've got I've got another tip, but before I give my tip, um, and Tria, it is a great book. And it's it's not it's not like I don't think you get a red card. Maybe you get a yellow card in soccer. You're not out. Okay. So it's under review. The play is under review. It's right? under review. All right. All right. Uh, not a touchdown. Out. Let's just it's say a touchdown. <laughs> we're gonna move it back from a touchdown to the one yard line. Hey, there's okay, some questions in there. I don't know. Fair okay. Enough, fair so enough. before we go to my tip of the week, I do want to mention our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life because you're going to have that passive income exceed your fixed expenses with no renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Learn how to do that to become totally free with Scott Todd as your Sherpa taking you up that mountain quickly, safely, efficiently, and thousands of times. And that tuition ain't going to cost you nothing. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Okay. My tip is a very practical land marketing tip during the holidays. So we have, we're, as we're getting ready for the Christmas season, I would have as a headline, that gadget you are thinking of buying your loved one is going to be obsolete in six months. This won't, this will last forever. Something like that, because our asset is the only thing that lasts forever. It is a generational asset. So I think you need to pick like someone as the villain in your ad. So, you know, the Nintendo Switch will be obsolete in six months. This five acres won't be. It lasts forever. That is my tip of the week. Tria, do you like it? I like it. I like that you shortened it. It was long at first, but yes, I like that. Oh yeah. Was, but you guys, you guys get the point. You get the point. Yeah. Eric. It's good. Good. Okay. Tate. I guess headlines go for tip to the week now. I mean, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Quotes and headlines. And, yeah. I, 
I guess I guess so. This is uh, <laughs> must be towards the end of the year. We're tired, ladies and gentlemen. We're tired. We need that two weeks off that Mark was discussing. It's a marketing <laughs> tip. It's I practical. guess I guess so. What? Yeah, sure. I like it. Thumbs up, right. man. <laughs> Did you move Mark to the one yard line too? That guy's way back there. I don't even know where he's at on that he's one. He's on it's his like, own one yard line. Yeah, he's like, hey guys, I got a tip of the week. <laughs> Tell people that your land is better than Christmas presents. Okay, yeah, that that's what he basically said. And I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm not saying uh, I'm not going to do that. But have you I played would, the uh, Nintendo Switch? The, the, uh, the phraseology <laughs> is a little a little different than. It's not like, whatever, Scott. Yeah, we should just we go. Call, you call let's just go on. on. Let's, let's, let's freedom you know ring. Let's go. You know what? I think it, I think it was. Wait, see, my memory is not as as well as it was too. I know that Eric turned over a couple of weeks ago. He was like all oh, supportive of Mark and Mike Zane and I were there. I don't think you were on. You were not on the call, Tate. You see, oh. I agree with you, man. Like I agree with you. I'm not coming to Mark's rescue. No. You're the man. This is it. And this is payback for Mark and Eric and all the others who have been mean this year. Boom. You were right on. I know it. I know I'm right. I know this. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you know what? You guys are going to get deeds because as stocking stuffers this year, you know what you're getting now? Cole. I Tria, want a switch. Eric, I want a Nintendo switch. Get ready for your deed in the mail. It's easy okay. to send. And it lasts forever. Go and go enjoy that Nintendo Switch that you're gonna to have to upgrade in six months, Tate. And your kids are gonna get bored of it too. My kids aren't gonna be allowed bring, to play. Bring on the Nintendo Switch, man. Yeah. You know why? Scott, here's, let's we'll link up. Here's, here's what we I won't say. let Mark in. Here's what I say, man. We bring that thing on. We we take it because guess what? There's a there's a shortage of stuff out there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go sell it for a premium. We're gonna take that premium that we get. We're going to go buy land and we're going to laugh all the way to the bank. <laughs> okay. I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Nintendo switch and I'm going to include it as the stocking stuff for when you buy a piece of land from me. Oh, oh there you go. Ooh. That's there. See now, now you're really <laughs> being creative. Buy land and get, get a stocking stuffer. Yeah. See now you think it's nice. Yeah. How much Teach your children about, about an inflation that. hedge. Brother, Buy that land. is a tip of the week right there, Marte. Right. You got I it. I know man. it. This, this is, good. This is <laughs> high quality. It was, it was hey. inspired by, you know, inspired by Mark. Thank you. Inspired by Tate Litchfield and <laughs> my stocking <laughs> stuffer from Mark. <laughs> Mark, I got a question for you, okay? Because you, you you just brought this up, right? You talk about the hedge of against inflation. So I actually have a video where I talk about the hedge against inflation being land, Right. You know what? Some dude comments, man. Like I, I'm still waiting. Like I, it, this one, this one is brewing. How I how I attack back. Some dude seriously comments. I have it right here. He seriously comments and says, "Well, what is the hedge against losing your hair?" Ha 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 ha. Oh man, that got personal Ouch. really fast. <laughs> right? Ouch. Right. Oh. So, so I'm like. I got it brewing. I got, I'm saving that one. I'm going to come back to it. And I'm going to be like, boom. Wow. We, you know, that could be the, that could be the next round table. You know what? If you guys have a good response for Scott, put it in the comments in Mighty Networks or the Facebook group. Yeah. You might just get a stocking stuffer and you might get it. Yeah. Get land. You might get some land. Yeah. Cause Nintendo <laughs> switches are no good. Cause yeah. they're the enemy. Because I heard that on the tip of the week. They're not the enemy. I have nothing against Nintendo Switch. I just have something against this gadget that's going to be obsolete. Well, you could get something that lasts forever. So there you go. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners. Remind them the only way that Scott and Tate are going to continue to haze me and Tari and Eric are going to come to my rescue is if you do us three little favors follow rate review the podcast send a screenshot of that review to support at the i'm going to send you a signed copy of dirt rich which i think is probably the perfect stocking stuffer for that loved one that wants to escape so economic dependency and be totally free so please do it it also helps us 
um, as well. So send the screenshot, rate, follow, rate, review, support at playgeek.com. All right, are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let's let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Not bad. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring.